Okay, the good news is I haven't got any PowerPoint. Woohoo, because I thought you might have enough of that today. Um, it's very nice to welcome you all here. I'm, as Alan said, I'm James George Lackis. I'm the Director of Communications and Impact at the Institute. Um, and I, I was just talking to someone over coffee. It, it, feels a bit, it feels a bit like a school reunion. I don't know how everyone else feels, but there's quite a lot of, I was going to say old faces, but I'm, I'm going to change that, familiar faces here. <laughs> Um, but uh, it's, it's a very nice atmosphere already. Hopefully that won't change as the tremendous heat builds up in this room over the day, which is one of the problems we may encounter. Um, but those of you I haven't met before, I haven't met face to face before, I, I look forward to um, meeting you over the course of the day. So welcome to the uh, Eldis Anniversary Workshop. You actually get two anniversaries for the price of one. Um, because obviously it is Elvis's 20th birthday, but as you, I'm sure are all aware, um, this is a very, this also represents a very important moment in IDS's 50th year. Now, when I was thinking about Elvis turning 20, I I was reminded of uh, the reaction I got from uh, program and policy colleagues in the INGO I work for um, previously when I informed them that I was coming to IDS because several of them immediately commented, Elvis is a brilliant resource. And it's striking that so many practitioners, for so many practitioners, Elvis is the first thing they think of when they think of IDS. Um, and I think that's a great testament to, to the brand and to the reputation and to the usefulness of, of, of it. Uh, and what I discovered when I actually arrived here, of course, is it wasn't just a resource, it isn't just a website, but it's a, it's a global partnership. Now, a big focus of IDS's 50th anniversary has been thinking about the future of development in a changing world, which is something which Melissa, I know, is going to be talking a little bit about later today. And one of the big issues that we're grappling with are issues around uh, inequities in knowledge production and dissemination. So I think uh, this workshop is, 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 for lots of reasons, happening at a very important moment. Um, I think it's often accepted that promoting sustainable and inclusive development and progress against the STGs will depend on both high quality research, but particularly on local knowledge and critical bodies of knowledge informing research agendas, uh, policy and practice. But as many of you are acutely aware, um, weak institutional capacity to take advantage of emerging digital technologies and to keep pace with uh, rapid innovation is uh, undermining both knowledge exchange and uh, global development learning. Meanwhile, research quality itself is undermined by the inequities in knowledge production. Iterative, problem-driven and adaptive learning and whole systems approaches are weakened by poor knowledge sharing systems. And despite all of this, the global public good of increasing access to development knowledge is really hard to fund sustainably. A large library project would always be facing future funding uncertainty. And a series of short projects around particular themes or with very specific sets of content partners would always be limited in their impact. In this context, here at IDS, we're asking ourselves, and I guess we're asking all of you as well, how do we upscale Elvis, uh, the Elvis Knowledge Portal, to have real impact on global knowledge systems? After all, despite all of its amazing achievements and developments over the past 20 years, it is still just a drop in the ocean. We are also asking, given the long tradition in this, in this particular sector of focusing on building capacity in the South, whether we can cross-subsidise global knowledge work with more commercially viable capacity building and support services than Northern knowledge producers and users. Many opportunities exist to use digital technology to strengthen knowledge systems and learning, and in particular to assist research organisations and knowledge intermediaries to more effectively embrace knowledge approaches. And indeed, many of you are providing the technical support, the infrastructure, the content uh, that is making a real difference to the quality of development research and global engagement with it. At IDS, 
Clearly, we're committed to continue to play a key role in the curation of development knowledge, building on the 20 years' experience and much more uh, in this field. For example, um, rapid response, response knowledge portals that provide interdisciplinary knowledge sharing in response to disasters, emergencies, and urban <coughs> policy issues are of increasing interest to us. And Melissa is going to give you a good example of that uh, later on. However, um, you know, I'm, I'm acutely aware that it's not all about technology. It's easy to get a bit lost in the techie stuff. Um, related to this, to this agenda is inadequate research capacity in the South, a donor landscape that increasingly favours technical solutions to development problems, and Southern researchers' uh, lack of access to high-impact peer-reviewed journals, plus much more besides. IDS's decision to relaunch the IDS Bulletin, our in-house journal, as an open access digital journal, was in part a response to some of these challenges. We wanted to protect the Bulletin's traditional focus on thematic issues, as each of these provide an opportunity for the co-production of an issue that includes a high proportion of Southern authors. The Bulletin has a higher pad, had previous to even coming open access, a higher proportion of Southern authors than any other development journal in the sector that we're aware of. We gave up income generating subscriptions, we, we sacrificed royalty payments and that form of income, but we also rejected expensive article processing charges that often exclude local perspectives. We took a progressive approach to licensing content and we tried to commission articles that are well evidenced but written in an accessible style for non-academic audiences. And finally, yes, we harnessed digital technology to make the content as accessible and as visible as possible. It's not perfect. Now, this all happened in January. We relaunched in January. <coughs> the funding is pretty uncertain. Uh, IDS is still currently sub subsidising the bulletin slightly. We rely heavily on our networks and projects to generate the issues themselves. And we know that the non-academic audience for the bulletin could be, can be and will be growing much further. But with more downloads in the first three months than in the entire previous year when it was published by Wiley Blackwell, it ain't bad. Um, and it shows that you can achieve what you can achieve when you are committed to digital knowledge sharing for global development, which is the subject of this workshop. Um, so the last thing I have to say before I hand back to Alan is I really want to thank the co-funders of this event. Um, the ERD have a long and close association with Elvis. In fact, and I don't know if you all know this, perhaps you do, um, it was the ERD the working group that gave feedback on the very, very first version of Elvis, which was actually a publication from the LDS. There's at least two copies of that here. And there are two copies. Right? You have to wear white gloves if you want to hold them. Um, so this really is a long-standing and very valuable partnership. And I also want to welcome D Groups, and I'm delighted this gathering has been able to host the D Groups Partners Meeting. D Groups are, an import, are important partners for us in taking forward the work we've developed through Elvis communities and we hope this marks the start of a long and fruitful partnership. So thank you all for coming. Enjoy your time here. I look forward to um, the rest of the day.